with something. Isaiah Swerve Scott here, episode 44 of the Swerve City Podcast. I'm running solo today. Ah, my partner in crime, my co-host is, uh, he disappeared. I don't know where he's at. But this is good. I've done this a couple few times. I was able to bring my family. I got Josh V and Hurricane Nita Strauss over here. Beverly Kills t-shirt. I'm still waiting for mine. Oh, I requested right. one last year. <laughs> it's been a crazy 2020. I get it. I, I'll let things pass. I get over things quickly. Don't worry about it. We're going to get there. We're going to talk. But man, we got an awesome episode. This is NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver Weekend. Hurricane Nita Strauss just ripped it on night one. We're going to get more into this, but first we got to promote, man. You know what to do, Mike. Put the graphic up. We have GPS, dun, dun, dun. and we have Erica's son. Oh, Mike! Mike, you slowing down? Uh, Old age no, catching it's up still, to you? It's still oh. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Two albums out that came out this past Thanksgiving. Swerve City GPS. Great projects between me and my co-host TZ Scott. That is out on all streaming platforms. Please check that out. And it's out on YouTube. And TZ Erica's son. Is out on all streaming platforms. Please go get that. Great bodies of work. And if I can, like on behalf of TZ, um, one of his great mentors passed away, Shamelo. You know, I wanted to reach out and say it just he couldn't be here to speak on speak on it, but I'm gonna speak on on behalf of TZ. He um, A and R'd and looked over a lot of our former projects before even we got to CP, uh, GPS. We get did from humble beginnings like a year and a half almost, almost two years ago. And he a and r and looked after that and like guided us in the right direction on how to properly create music, especially for me. I'm new to this. And his knowledge, like being around writing, like for Bell Biv DeVoe, having Grammy Award, like winning nominated songs that he was a part of, just getting that knowledge and getting mm-hmm. the like reassurance that we were on the right path to creating music to get to an Erica Sun and a GPS. Like rest in peace, Shamello. Shout out to you, man. We love and you miss you. So now we well, got to get back to yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was it was a little rough. We yeah. gonna get a little rough too, cause man, like we eat, shh, DMX man, he's Ooh, like that's yeah. Sad. Have that's you sad. been hearing about that? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I told her. Was he? No, I told Stephanie actually. Sorry, we were talking. We were bringing him up. Yes. And the uh, we were just randomly talking and the. Um, we were just like, did you? And I was talking to Stephanie. We were sitting next to her, Stephanie McMahon. We were sitting yeah. next to her at the show. We brought up DMX. She's like, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, DMX. He's like, he's in the vegetable state, right? And she's like, wait, what? I was like, yeah. And it's like, it's so sad, man. You know, he's such an iconic rapper. The that like, voice oh my god, like, and I saw him perform live. I was able to ch- check him out one time when he was the biggest. He was on tour with Limp Bizkit. Yeah, back yeah. in the day. Oh, that was a that was wild. That I remember those great. tours. That was great because yeah. it was cool mixing the worlds, right? You yeah. know, he was coming into the rock world, and there were rock people were bringing him in. It was great when bands like Corn and Limp Bizkit were bringing different genres in, and to see him at his prime play, it was cool. You know, I was like, man, I get it. You know, I get it. Like, wow, that's why he is where he is. But it's such a sad thing with the, you know, he's been battling that stuff for so long. You yeah. know. And it was crazy because he was just starting to get back to the world and, like, get back to, like, oh, because I think he was working on a project. He was about to release more music, too. Okay. And, like, he was, like, starting to get around the right people, getting the great environment. Like, I was down at, um, uh, what's, um, what, Rolling Loud, the Rolling Loud uh, tour. It was, like, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was there with Flatbush Zombies and stuff, and we're in the back. And VIP, and we'll just watch looking at all these artists walk around, and then DMX just walks right past. I'm like, and then just still sign autographs, look healthy, look full, Mm. look literally look exactly like this. This might have been that day. This picture could have been, I don't know. You said two years ago, yeah, like a year and a half, two years ago, yeah. And that, like, that could have been the last time anybody got to perform really, yeah, Yeah. those big, like, multiple sets and multiple stages and stuff like that. And like, the impact he had on like a lot of our youth, like, not even just like urban youth like everybody everybody every culture like he, like he was a, he was a you know it's cool with him he was a 
He was a, a rapper that was able to transcend into different industries, you know, different genres. You know, he got respected from a lot of different people, which was cool, you know, because sometimes music is very like, you know, if you're in the rock world or whatever, you're just in that world. If you're yeah. in the hip hop world, just in that world. And certain artists can cross over. Yeah. And he did that great. You know, he had a great voice. It was, it was awesome. I, I loved hearing his stuff. The Real Testament, I think, is I know nothing about rap and hip hop and even I had and then there was X. Yes. <laughs> I had it. Dark and Hell is really, High. That album, it, oh my God. Yo, I was raised off that album, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have been listening to it, but my dad <laughs> like it's cultural. You, my dad was playing that when he picked me up for summers that I was busy. Mm-hmm. Like I'll never forget that album just going through like my dad would play it boom every time. Um like I, I still to this day I'll still never forget like that Woodstock. The, 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 um, I've, what, what year was that? 99? 99. Nin- there was two. There was 94, probably 99. It was the 99 one, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then that sea of people yeah. and him performing mm-hmm. in that. That is the f- most forever iconic imagery in rap history as far as for performances to me. Like, I feel like everybody goes to that. You saw him live, right? You said? I, I seen him backstage, but I never saw him live. Yeah, I didn't get to see him perform that day. Yeah. But man. He was good you know, what, what, So, what was. They say there was a drug over this, right? But did they say yeah. what or how? Like that's what I, I've only been hearing and seeing things like on like whatever's popping up on my phone. I'm hearing OD, and I'm like, oh come on, man, no. Yeah, that sucks, man. Yeah, sure. man. So we keep bringing the mood down, y'all. That, y'all ain't here for this. <laughs> Let's talk about like what's going on with you guys, man. Uh-huh. Nito, what's going on, bro? Like seriously, like I've been. Like, over the past year, I've been seeing you at the L.A. Rams stadium. Boom. I know. So I, I forgot so we talked about the Rams stuff. I would have worn all my Rams gear. Oh, I had to represent Josh's yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm <laughs> New Orleans guy yeah. over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But th- yeah. every yeah. time seeing that logo <laughs> with you, I get so proud. I get ah. the pride. I'm like, ah, yes. <laughs> what do you think about the new logo? It's growing on me. The color is not. You know, I'm I'm getting there too. Yeah. I the thing I didn't like about the logo as a Los Angeles sports fan, I thought it looked too much like the Chargers logo. Yep. It looked a lot like They're the San Diego. The they shouldn't be staring. We didn't need another one. We needed one football team and we got it. We didn't need San Diego's team. Oh. I know I'm talking preaching to the choir oh. here, but then, I wouldn't mind staying at St. Louis, but uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I just saw that they were thinking about um, taking uh, the Chargers out or something. Get them out. Good. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, Deuces. <laughs> I could be wrong, but because like L like L A L A uh, Lakers are sharing them with the Clippers. Yeah, yeah. Chargers are sharing oh, with them. Oh, well, I mean for now. Oh, they they about to move that too. Yeah. Oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, it uh, might be. Okay. We just might not yeah. know. <coughs> I don't know. Breaking, Breaking news. Yeah. Please oh, inform us, the goat. Yeah. Well, I know they're um, they're redoing a bunch of stuff around SoFi. Like I know they're building a lot Ooh. around out around there, so they That's might be, be new, doing new something with the forum or something. That's going to be a metropolis. Yeah, yeah. around there. And SoFi it's interesting. Looks amazing. Yeah, SoFi is incredible. Like oh, it's God. it's unbelievable how state of the art everything is in that stadium. I can't believe like I can't believe you guys haven't gotten to get in and see it yet. We couldn't. I know. <laughs> but, like, I can't believe like it's so crazy to me still that like now that's just sort of like that's where I go for work. It's like when we come into the PC right. and we're like, oh my god, this is so amazing. You're like, this is my job. I come here every week every for this, week. Yeah. and that's kind of how SoFi is for me. I'm like, oh, this is my spot. This is my elevator. This is the security guards I know. Like, oh, you know, so it's it's just wild that I. I get to do that and I just can't wait for football to start again oh me neither me neither yeah. we got Sam Bradford I'm mm-hmm. actually looking forward to that mm-hmm. like me personally mm-hmm. you just lost your legendary oh, quarterback <sighs> Drew Brees that's a tough one yeah, how that's do you how do y'all how are you stomaching that one right now yeah. it's it's tough man because I always tell people you know I grew up in New Orleans area and Drew Brees was more than a football player you know yeah. he gave that city hope he, he, he transcended something to people that just made everybody feel good, you know? Yes. So he brought people together. You know, uh, I used to tell Nita this stuff when we were first dating. I was like, you got to go to the Saints game. You got to see this. And she's kind of like, well, I've been to sports game before. I'm like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> Over there, yeah. the Sa- Saints is like a religion. Like you. Yeah, are, I believe it. You bleed black and gold. You know, I'm like, you don't get it. And she's like, oh, I think I got it. I'm like, you don't get it. <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> I finally brought her. <laughs> And she'll see, like, everywhere, everybody 
has Saints gear on. Oh, it's true. Even in the off season when we fly into you yeah. know the New Orleans airport, there's Drew Brees jerseys, Alvin Kamara jerseys. Everything. I I love those cities. I love those teams. Yeah, like it's a culture. It's oh, literally yeah. a culture of the winning of the team of yeah. like the Saint. I love that. Yeah, the so, city is like see, New Orleans is a cultural city in yeah, itself. Totally. It's yeah, prideful it's, city. So one thing that's cool growing up. Growing up, it was always like a saying, like uh, you know, hey, you know, one day, like maybe, in, in, in when you when you were growing up, you're like, I'm gonna be a wrestler, and they're like, yeah, okay, like, you know what I mean, it's like that. <laughs> yep. So the, the, oh, say, yeah. the saying, I there, still see you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mom, man, you, show, you show them right, right? Uh, prove them wrong, but. Um, right. Over there, it was kind of like, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when the Saints go to the Super Bowl, that was always a thing. Right. I remember was, those. That was literally a saying all the time. So when we got to the Super Bowl, I was kind of like, what? <laughs> I got to see it, you know? You the pig flies. The, yeah. pig, the pig flew today. Not only did we go, but we won. Yep. And it was amazing, man. I, like, I wish it, you know, those people that don't know could experience that feeling yes. and i was in la when it happened so i, fl- I was like and they, they already said like win or lose we're gonna have a mardi gras style parade in new orleans i was like i'm going and when they won yes. oh that's so awesome that's so oh man like, like, that's so cool i'm not a new or- I, I don't hate new orleans saints at all i actually love the team they're really hey i i, I, <laughs> I, love the team. I, I I was cheering for them because I wanted Drew. I was a Drew yeah. Brees fan. Yeah. yeah. Even, How could you not be? Even from San Diego, I was like a. I was a Drew Brees fan. He was yeah. so good. Yeah. And I'm like, especially being like the five eleven, five ten quarterback, right. doing like, you don't scout and put a franchise around a five ten quarterback. I'm right, like, right. you know what? I'm going to root for him. And like seeing him, first off, that team was ridiculously good. Oh, yeah. Like the offense was stacked. It was so good. Like seeing him win a like. I, uh, it, it was it was the underdog fight to me still to this and day. and the, and you know the champagne relationship is amazing. Yes. I mean, dude, just just think back on this, right? First time you're going to the Super Bowl, already enough pressure for the team, right? Yep. And second half, how do you start off? Onside kick. <laughs> I mean. Does that not say, say everything? everything? Ballsy. Oh, Ballsy. You look at that, you're like... That is New Orleans. <laughs> that is New Orleans. That was insane. Drinking 11 o'clock on a Tuesday? <laughs> New Orleans, baby. That's what we do. You've been there before. Oh, right? yeah, I, I, Mania weekend, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that was one of her first times there. Mm-hmm. One of them, yeah. Like, to see yep. kind of how it is, you know, it's, it's yeah. very different. It's very different. I, I don't partake too much in many activities mm-hmm. um i kind of like I'm, I'm there i'm always i'm a great witness i'm like oh yeah i saw him <laughs> jump off that yeah oh he took that whoa i'm good at that right, i watch right, right, right. everything and survey mm-hmm. so i can tell the story when they're messed up later on right, and they'd right. be like oh dog you that's remember? not what happened <laughs> yeah. at all that's not what was in that drink at all right. i'm good at that or i'll help someone get home sometimes yeah. i don't know but like Seeing New Orleans, just watching it and just being in the atmosphere of it was fun. Like, I was, like, walking around town with, like, Aleister Black and, like, mm-hmm. Sammy Callahan mm-hmm. and just being around those guys and, like, like just um, surveying the city and stuff. Like, what friends, close buddy friends. Uh, like, and it was just it was just cool. It was, like, it felt right. really cool. Like, everybody was friendly to come up and, like, hey, let's just take autographs. Oh, man, yeah. what's your name? Oh, cool. Just, like, it, it felt really homey. And yeah. I, that's one of the few cities I could say. That and Seattle are my homey cities. Yeah. And I was, I, I want to go back to Seattle. Haven't been back to New Orleans since, but those are the two places I want to get back to. But do you think Stafford gets it done? Yes or no? Yes. You think so? Yes, I think I do. so. Yes, I do. I think. Yes, so. Yes, I do. As long as we keep our defense strong, because Stafford never had a good defense. Yeah. To put and, him in good positions to win. And he never had a good offensive line. No. Which he won't really hear either. But that's, that's beside the point. I like. It's funny. I was like, Aaron Donald will fix it. Yeah. Aaron Donald will fix it. Jalen Ramsey will fix it. <laughs> yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll get us right. Right. Like, I, I just think he has a, finally has a, a good. Uh, and I like Cam Akers. Yeah. I like Cam Akers mm-hmm. as the rookie. He killed it last year. Totally. Like, oh, man, it was awesome. Wolford was pretty good, too. Yes. There was a lot of people yeah. that stepped up because, like, yeah. Cooper Cup went down and, like. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm really looking I'm really looking forward to it. We don't make as many moves because all of our money's put into like our defense. Yeah. But just acquiring Stafford, I'm happy with. I how think about be good. how about uh, Taysom Hill, Saints? Ah, uh, yeah. Swiss Army knife. Uh, hundred a- hundred forty million dollars worth of a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> Is that what he got paid? A hundred forty mil. Are we talking about the same Taysom Hill number seven? Yeah, punter, kicker, returner, Every- all yeah. 140 mil. Man, he's, you know what? He's wow. worth it, man. Is he? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Is he? 
Hell I mean, he's good. Yeah. yeah, he's he's dope. But like, dude, how many people like he's like the the Bo Jackson of a football team, that in the sense <laughs> of well, play different sports. That's what I mean. Oh yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Taysom Hill can do everything. You know, but does he do everything? Well? Million Hell well, yeah, dude! One hundred forty million dollars. He does, he does do everything well, but <laughs> <laughs> look at that! Look at that! He, yeah, that's look at my that. favorite thing about him is like you can just tell how much this guy loves football. Like, yeah, everything he does with a smile on his face, he like does. he's back there cheering and screaming. He, he, but like, man, you're filling Drew Brees' shoes. That's the that's where I'm like. But mm. in, in a way, yes or no, right? Because man, he blocks punts, blocks field goals, <laughs> runs the ball like a running returns back. Returns the kids. Returns. I mean, dude, nah. he's. He does a lot. He does it all well. It's not like he does it like, eh. He just he's strong. He runs people over. There's like, a lot of room for injuries. I'm and you know they had, a quarter, they had a quarterback uh, challenge kind of deal, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. he actually did uh, as good or beat Drew. I'm, I, I'm curious. I'm very, I'm very excited to see what he can do. He's I don't amazing. think he's going to be the starting quarterback, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't they, think they, he they is. just signed. Uh, what's his name? I give James you one hundred and forty million dollars. No, Jameis Winston was was in they, that starter. They brought they brought him, they brought back. him back for yeah. one more year, right? Mm-hmm. One year. Yeah, okay. I would. I don't know. Hmm? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. He was he was the backup for the last couple of years. Yeah. So yeah. I think they just I I bet you they start him. I bet you they do, and they keep him in his role doing every other thing. That's true. So that's the, what I would do. The thing that's going on in New Orleans is they're saying like there's like a quarterback challenge almost like let's see who's going to do the best and the bet the best man wins <laughs> actually i think came out in the news in new orleans it was like there is no quarterback challenge and it's like well well who's the quarterback <laughs> you know what i mean like well who's gonna that's the challenge yeah exactly <laughs> so I, 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 that guy's awesome man he's he's amazing so let's go back to your history a little bit um touring with alice cooper mm-hmm. let's get into that how did that come about how, first off how did like you get started in being first of all, like the great career of like being the most pro- one of the most prominent fixtures in lead guitar as a female, not even just a female, just period, just all around the world. We all know Nita Strauss, one of the best lead, best guitarists in the world. Where did you get your start, and then getting into forming with Alice, uh, touring with Alice Cooper? So uh, I grew up in L.A., a great home for music. Ah, there I am. I miss that so much. Oh, not the <laughs> yeah. Maybe name the song. <laughs> Um, that is, is that under my wheels? Yep. Yeah. He, he knows our little stage, Don't some of the I stage moves. Back here, creep. <laughs> 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 he knows my one hand stage move. There's like certain points in the show where I always do certain things. And like, and now, now that he mentions it, now I know what point of the show that is. Oh, I miss playing. Oh, man, we're getting, we're getting there. We're getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're we, getting there. We Trust fans. me. We had fans last night. Yes. We're getting there. It's all good. We're getting there. Uh, so I started playing at 13. Um, I started playing shows pretty much immediately. I just, I fell in love with it. I knew immediately that's what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Um, I started touring really quickly. Like within two years, I did my first like little tours. I was in high school. So we would go out for, you know, winter break, summer vacation, that kind of stuff. And um, I was just obsessed with guitar. I was obsessed with getting better. I was obsessed with playing on stage in front of people. It wasn't as much like the technique that I wanted. I wanted all that, but I more wanted that rush of the crowd, the fans, the performance, the energy. So I just started playing guitar for anybody that would have me, whether it was rock, punk, metal. Uh, I had a hip hop producer that would hire me to come in and play like guitar riffs that he would create into backing tracks for rappers and stuff like that. I don't know if they ever got used, but like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) just come in for a day. Here's a beat. Do something cool. And like, okay, that's done. Next song. Here's a different beat. Do something cool. Like um, just like the most random things just to get that experience. Yeah, like that's the yeah the, the experience. That's exactly. what you're getting from that, and that's mm-hmm. like is great. Totally. Like you're not doing it for the money at that point. No, no. <laughs> but like no, no. Like that, the money will come if you stay totally. consistent with it. But like yeah. you need to get the techniques, and you need to just be able to like, all right, got it, boom, I can do that, and then you yeah. develop that there. Yeah, and it's so interesting. You know, I've I've thought about this a lot. How many parallels there are between the world of wrestling and the world of so being many. In a we rock, talk about this you know. all the time. What do you know? We're saying <laughs> something right. We're saying something right. Exactly. You know, like the time that you guys spend in the indies honing your craft. You know, yeah. getting paid in peanuts and gas money. You know, like that's the same thing we do in bands. <laughs> peanuts would be great if we exactly. got that. Lord. <laughs> Yeah, that's the same thing, you know, in bands, you know, you get in the van, you drive yourself, you know, you make barely enough selling T-shirts to pay for gas to the next city, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's those are the things that make you into the performer that can go out and do that, that can go out and perform for NXT or WWE. And, 
if you don't have that background, then you can still do it. But I don't think you have that same drive, that same determination. Nope. Like you don't know what it takes if it comes easy. So I'm glad that I'm glad that I had the grind at the beginning before I got to this point. Like, cause now I understand everything that it takes to get to that point. You know what it feels like to be hard. Like yeah. a lot of, like I, I, I don't understand like um, people wanting the easy cut shortcut to the success. I'm like, totally. no, cause like that's the, like, you don't. You need to understand what it feels like to have a struggle, because yeah. when you when it's going all, it's everybody can manage when everything's going all good and good and good. But when it happens, when you kind of hit that dip and you don't know how to get out of that. But in the opposite, yeah. of that, some people can't handle it. You know why? They can't. Yeah, right. Because once you take that fast elevator to the top, which there is no shortcuts, right? Right. Because eventually, if you don't have that experience. Something's going to show you why you needed that experience. Yes. And some people that make it to the top really fast. I mean, perfect example, who Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, to me, the, one of the, the greatest Absolutely. of all time. But that rode, rode to the top, immediately shoot up to the top. And when he had all this money, all this stuff. At 21. Nobody could, nobody could teach you that. You know, mm-hmm. you need to do this. And he was just like, money. <laughs> like, you know. Like, I, I, I can have that yeah. right now? <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> yeah. And nobody can teach you that kind of stuff. But, you know, if you work your way up, and money is obviously like the that's the that's the long-term goal, but he got everything so fast, so quick. Right. And, you know, all those things, those roads, you, you need all those experiences, and you need the right people guiding you in your life because, you know, that journey, you, you learn a lot in that journey. Yeah. And there's no, and that's the problem, I think, with a lot of society today. It's this, I want to be insta-famous and, I need everything right now, you know? Well, well, everything's given to us right now. Like, all the information we want is right here. We can yep. access it now. Yep. Like, the music, I we don't wait for albums. We, mm-hmm. nope, I want it right now. <coughs> when it drops on midnight, yep. we, you're like, no, I, we don't go to the store to get it. Like, mm-hmm. I miss oh, that Lord. feeling. Oh, I know. Dude, like, yeah. um, everything, like, even Amazon, I want this today, yep. you know? We yep. want everything. All of our validation gets instantly, especially with, like, social media and likes exactly. and comments. Like, I want pe- I want to know what people feel about, like, after TakeOver went off, I could have went to YouTube, which I did. I went to YouTube <laughs> <laughs> and went to, and I got reviews automatically. Like, yeah. literally, like, 10 o'clock went off, 10.30, I'm getting reviews from people in the UK. Yeah. Like, because mm-hmm. we want to know how... Everybody, how we made everybody feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We want to know, like as artists, we want to know, we want to feel that back. Like yeah. we made y'all feel something. We want to feel what you felt. Right. From especially us. with yeah. no, especially with no crowd or limited crowd, it it's makes even, you yeah. seek that validation even more from the internet, from social media, because you don't have that roar of approval or disapproval or whatever it yes. is, knowing that you did your job right. You're like, well, did I do good? <laughs> Who's gonna tell me? <laughs> I remember I was talking to Pete Dunn. And it was like when he did war games, he was like in there in the in the mix, like just boom, bow, bap, like bashing, like undisputed air and stuff. And he just like he he told me he was like, I didn't even know if what was going on was like good for yeah. me. It, internally he just didn't know because he couldn't sure. feel it. Mm-hmm. We don't get the feeling like, is this good? I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm doing my best. I'm killing it, right? But I just don't know. Cause yeah. and you guys feed off the reaction of the crowd. Yes. It really dictates like as a musician, you kind of do what you're going to do. And I feel like it's easier when the crowd is into it, but if they're not into it, we're still kind of doing the same thing. You really dictate what you do based on what the crowd is yeah. doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll like the whole, change direction, change the whole direction. And, like, and, it, and it's interesting talking to like the, the hall of famers and like the guy yeah. for a long time. That's all they did back in the day. You know, they would, a lot of them were calling in the ring and would change on the fly. Right. Like, you know, back in that, and that they, they had to hear the crowd. Yeah. You know? It's it's such a different just it's a different uh, we, dynamic. We were to- like man, I, I listen to a lot of other podcasts like um, uh, uh, what's the one shot? I think it was like No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. Anybody know, anybody know? I think it's like No Chill. I think it's No Chill. No, no, that's uh Adam Twenty Two and them. They do. We can't speak about y'all over here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like they talk about like the evolution of like the sport of basketball, Mm -hmm. but I, uh, he talks about basketball mainly, but the way he speaks about it is in so many different ways can relate to other industries of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Talks about like the, the older generation always like says, Oh, you guys, you new guys couldn't play in our generation, that whole philosophy and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. When he talks about, he's like, I don't watch like it, it doesn't help him in 2021 to watch a Pete, Pistol Pete Maravich. 
Mm-hmm. Right. You have mm-hmm. to watch the generation pro- before you mm-hmm. because that's the evolution right there. That's yeah. where it changed. Absolutely. And so you got to watch the the recent change, not three, four changes ago. Oh, right. yeah. You know? Right. So, like, the generation before, like, oh, the this w- the, this move, the crossover was so monumental. It changed the game. It's like, well, nowadays we have all these combinations to volley off a crossover. We just don't cross over. We sure. have crossover, back step here, <clears throat> here, here, boom, boom. So Because we evolved <clears throat> the step of what we do. Yeah. You know, and now we had a counteract for that that on defense. Oh, if you do here, you step here. Right. So like, there's just so many generational gaps. Do you feel like there's one in music as well? Just like the the previous one before. Do you feel like you you do have to study like 1960, 1950, 19, you know? Well, I'll give you a perfect example. Yes. Um, And that is when we do guest stuff. Like you know, if I'm playing, you know, if we do a charity event every year with Alice, where they do this huge thing um, in Maui to benefit the Maui Food Bank. And it'll be, you know, Alice's manager and sort of this star studded thing. And they raise a ton of money for charity and they'll have every celebrity that is in Hawaii for New Year. Like they do it on New Year's Eve. They have every celebrity, Steven Tyler, Sarah McLaughlin, Sammy Hagar, like anybody yeah, that they can Oprah get to come in. <laughs> well, she didn't, oh, yeah. she didn't perform she didn't with perform us. There. <laughs> I want to promote the book. Joe Montana. <laughs> Joe there. Montana yeah. got up and, and sang schools out with us. <laughs> yeah. I need to go to Maui. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But what we do when we do an event like this is we don't go and listen to the artist's record. We go and watch a live video of them doing that show, that song, as recent as we can find. Mm. And the reason why we do that is because they're going to have a different ending they've been doing. They're maybe going to do it a half step down for the singer's voice to be more comfortable. You know, whatever it is. So... Um, we had Linda Carter who played Wonder Woman yes. um, and she told us she wanted to do crazy little thing called love by Queen. And we go, OK, this is amazing, strong female voice, you know, and we all just went and listened to the Queen song. We're like, cool, she wants to do a Queen song. We'll do a Queen song. Right. And our drummer, Glenn Sobel, who's an absolute pro, like just the most pro. He comes into rehearsal. He goes, did you guys happen to look up any live videos of her doing this song? I didn't even know she had ever done the song. I thought she just wanted to do, do a Queen song. She does this jazzy, contemporary, slow version oh. of Crazy Little Thing Called Love. And we're like, oh, everything that we learned is completely out the window. <laughs> like, Oh, wow. You have to look up the most recent video of the artist yes. doing that. And same thing when I started playing with Alice. If I had just gone and listened to the records that he put out in the 70s, I wouldn't know any of the cool modern changes they made, the new guitar harmonies, the interesting bits they're doing to modernize the songs. So, yeah, I think it's just an absolute, again, complete parallel. To what you're talking about. Do you believe um, crowds have changed as well when performing? Yeah. Like from like t- like mid to, mid 90s to early 2000s to 2010? Well, yeah, they didn't have a phone back then. <laughs> there you go. There they didn't you have go. a phone to look at. You would see people's faces. Not yep. this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. I, think I missed it, the lighter. Yeah, right? Now it's just the phone flashlight. Yep. All right, tell me your uh, thing with the selfie thing. Oh, yeah. Well, two good examples I have. What Josh brings up is a great one. Um, And you guys probably see this all the time as well. Both things, actually, I'm going to say you probably probably see all the time in the ring. You're up front. You're giving everything you have. You're getting in someone's face. And instead of seeing their eyes and then being present and looking with you, you see this. (laughs) You see this. The back of the head. (laughs) I'm involved with this. Here. Here I'm I bleeding am. to death, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Be, be I can't feel my legs, man. <laughs> and they're like, like a zoo animal. Right, like you, right. You see that lion back there? I was this close. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so that drives it's me true. crazy. <laughs> yeah. That, that drives me totally crazy. And then um, the other thing that that made me think of is we've got this incredible part in the Alice Cooper show. Where, you know, And if anybody hasn't seen what we do, at a certain point in every single show, he dies. He's executed oh. by someone on stage, whether, you know, he'll get hanged or he'll get electrocuted or, you know, uh, most recently. The, last, the story that culminates. There's to a, like yeah, the, there's a whole storyline yeah. of, you know, like you would you would get it immediately as as a storyline person. Like yeah. most fans don't get it. A lot of people really do get the subtle storyline that flows through the songs. Right. The show. So at the end of the, the storyline, he dies. And um, the one that we're doing now is a guillotine. It's really dramatic. His wife comes out. She's a ballerina. She comes out in this incredible costume. She executes him with the guillotine. And he's got, and she holds up the severed head and (sighs) spits blood out into the crowd. And it's a huge thing. 
And all you see, as soon as the guillotine comes out, and I, I have a good vantage point because we have a, this big castle set on stage and I'm yeah. up high, not a single phone is down. Every phone, 10,000 phones in the air, just, huh. It's like, you guys know that this has been filmed. Like <laughs> Everybody sees it. You know, you guys are filming no, for TV every weekend. It's going it to be on now. TV. They want it on their Instagram story. Oh, I was there. I saw this blurry mm-hmm. cell phone video of this happening instead of just watching it. Because <laughs> like, you know why? Because they wanted validation mm-hmm. from their friends or whoever's watching them. Oh, you were there. That they were there, mm-hmm. and I filmed this, so come like my post. I was yeah. there. You weren't there. That's it. FOMO. Mm -hmm. FOMO is killing our art. Yeah. I'm telling you. Arts in general, all all around. Absolutely. It it, it hurts my soul, man. But we, I feel like now that people have been home with their technology too much, overload. Totally. It's been a huge overload for the past year. I feel like people are going to be like, you know what? I'm going to rest. I'm going to actually leave my phone at home. Yeah. Hopefully, hope so. that's me hoping. I hope so. I yeah. think you're right. Hey, Takeover was feeling really good. Yes. Because everybody, like night one, like being in in the ring, I felt like everybody was glued. They were present. Yes. Truly everybody present. All a hundred percent attention. Mm-hmm. We had it all. Like so, because I feel like people wanted to genuinely feel yeah. the performance instead of watching through their phone, watching through the TV. Yeah. So I think we're going to get back to that in 2021. I think so. Yeah. Seeing the crowd, though, in some ways, in, so, in certain like low moment, moments where it was kind of quiet, I'm like, do we have to retrain people how to be in the crowd? <laughs> like, no. you know, it's like, this is where you cheer. No. You keep, you Truth know. be told, I, I wait for the, mo- the low moments. I, I need Me personally, as a performer, I need the low moments. Right, right, right. Because right. that's where I gauge where to go next. Well, mm-hmm. What I'm saying yeah. is what, what I meant oh, by yeah, that yeah. is like yeah. a, Everybody's been like locked down for so long. Yeah, you figure like, ah, like the whole yeah. time, you know, like ah, I'm free, you know, kind of like I'm watching this, but it was there was a, there were some moments I'm like, oh, what do we have to reteach people how to be in a live yeah. event? You know what I mean? Yep. Like, it's inter- It was interesting. It was interesting to see. Dude, uh, I remember Mexico crowds. It was just like, it was just... R- Bananas. Yeah, they just... Ah! <laughs> <Never stops. laughs> they don't... Dip, oh, 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 oh. They no. don't chant or go with you. They're just... Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it's a chant, it's at that level. And then the chant just fades into the screen. More, just more general screen. mess <laughs> <Yes>. of noise, <laughs> which I... Hey, at least you're making... At least Best you're making something. World. Yeah. And then, like, and then people's kids are running around. There's this, then there's like vendors. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you kind of hear everything. Yeah. Within the noise, it's a little weird. You wrestled in Japan? Never did Japan. Okay, so tell them the story about when you played Japan. Oh, the interesting thing about Japanese crowds is, you know, the culture is so polite that yes. there is no noise, and so you know, you get your immediate applause, and then politely waiting for the next thing, and. And it's so odd as a performer because there's yeah. no, like you talked about peaks and peaks and valleys in the show. There's like the peak and then there's death. <laughs> it's like <laughs> one from the other. And it's it's All, not meant to be like that, you know. It's and literally on and off switch. On Exactly, like a light switch. And then we did changeover. So um, we played a, a festival called Loud Park in Japan, which is like the, their WrestleMania, basically. Yeah. The biggest one in the Tokyo Dome. And there's two stages set up side by side. And normally when you have two stages like that, in between bands, there's there's music, there's crowd chatter, there's, you know, a host of the event, you know, throwing out T-shirts or doing something. And at Loud Park during changeover, it was dead silence. Like the only thing you heard was like the crew rolling things into place and like <laughs> plugging cables. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're like, Sound <laughs> check. all right, guys. Um, let me get, you know, Tom one. <laughs> you know? No. <laughs> and it was just, and I was there on the side stage like, are they tired already? Like, <laughs> no, we enjoyed we, this part too. No, this is great. Yeah. Like, you know, they, and they loved it. And, you know, when we got on stage, it was like super high energy. Like they loved it. They were fists in the air, cheering. Then we finished the song. <laughs> you're just saying it's, it's polite it's students. Strange, you know, yeah, polite students. You hear like you know you're playing a song, you hear a song, or a show, whatever. And then, you know, and yeah. uh, done. And then, uh, yeah, and the normal thing, uh, right? Yeah, and it goes into the next song, and it's like uh, quiet. And yeah. I was just like, whoa, <laughs> it's kind of creepy in ways, you know. But I guess. Uh, the, the wrestling crowd is like that over there, so, too, apparently. So, from what I've been t- told and what I've seen, um, they're not allowed to... Like, everybody's wearing masks and mm-hmm. stuff, and they're still socially distancing, but it's still, like, 10,000 people. They were, like, mm-hmm. 5,000 on the live, like, on the road shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they still... They they can only clap. 
they can't they can't cheer. I've been hearing that. Yeah, yeah, they can't like vocalize anything. They can't do do it. So it's just like tch, 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 or tch, tch. right. But you also also don't know who's who's the bad guy. You usually hear boo. Ooh, you, yeah. So how do you know who's they just kind of clapping for everything. Uh, so it's that's what I've been seeing too from when yeah. I watch the stuff. I'm like, this is odd. Interesting. This is definitely weird. I heard that they were going to open theme parks with no screaming. <laughs> Someone said they're going <laughs> to. <laughs> you can go on the roller coaster, but you cannot be scared. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fainting. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't let it out. I exactly. I'm just overwhelmed. You get like all those videos, like the people that pass out on the. Yeah. <laughs> Hold it all in. Yeah. But are you having a good time? <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. So we, we you're wearing a Beverly Kills oh, yeah. shirt right here, mm-hmm. Josh. Yes. This is your creation. Is Talk creation. about that. Oh. And how I haven't got one yet. Oh, <laughs> COVID, COVID. No, I mean, use the excuse that everybody has oh. used in the last year. Is yeah, COVID. yeah. Why don't you re- why, why, I sent you an email. Why don't you respond? Uh, COVID. 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 I'm like, okay. These things are rare to get, like workout equipment, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I started it. I think the anniversary was uh, this past week, actually. Yeah, the six. Oh. Yeah, yeah six. five so years five of Beverly years. Kills. Five years. Ooh, so, what do you know? So, what, where, how do we come about with Beverly Kills? So, basically, it is... Not like that. Oh, wow, we got... Oh, boom. Yeah, it's a, oh, look at yours. Look at that. So, basically, get yours. Beverly Kills is... Um, it's kind of a filter through how I see things in society. And I think it's not just me. I think it's a lot of people. It's how certain things in society, how we are today, like the insta-famous thing and the people, they want to get that, you know, they want the elevator to to success immediately. And they're willing, some people are willing to cut somebody's throat to get one inch forward. You know what I mean? And they don't care by any means necessary. They want to get ahead. Or how it's going to affect them later on. They don't don't think about that. Right. You know what I mean? And so I've experienced so many things in my life where I saw that firsthand. I I was, uh, you know, um, on the receiving end of that kind of stuff at times, you know. And um, I had this idea probably seven years ago. And I used to actually do a DJ drummer thing um, for UFC after parties. And oh, nice. Yeah, this was like seven, eight years ago. And it was called Beverly Kills. And the whole idea was the same. The whole thing was, it was like more of a the theme of it, the feel. And then, um, oddly enough, I was supposed to work with uh, DJ Lethal of Limp Bizkit. Oh, okay. And uh, he Yo, was Limp Bizkit kept just <clears throat> finding his way back and, in here. And he was, uh, <laughs> he was the DJ for House of Pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. And he was yeah. at my house, and we we're talking about doing stuff. And he was like, "Beverly Kills, huh?" And like, yeah. So let's, uh, the, you know, we're gonna work on these things and these changes. And he's like, "Beverly Kills, that's a clothing brand, man." I go, "Yeah, I'm gonna do shirts and stuff." You know? And he's like, "No, nah, but <laughs> no, that's like that's what I would do." <laughs> you know? I was like, "Yes, yeah." So let's, you know, and <laughs> let's work on his music. You know, we, we never got to that point with it, and uh, he got busy with other stuff. And then I was like, you know what? I was going to do shirts anyway. Let me just take this off. So I have all these ideas that come through my head and they just live there. And actually, when we started dating, um, <clears throat> I had like all these ideas that I actually had were in my brain. And it's interesting to see the process, right? You have an idea in your head and then you come up with it. Yeah. And then, then it's like, okay, it's moving forward to its way of the life. And then you print it out. You put it on a, a mock-up. Yep. And then you kind of see that form of life. And yes. Then, then when this you is see what it, it would look like if it was a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, and then you know, and then you finally get it printed. And then you, when you see it on people, it's crazy, right? But with had all these shirts printed out, all these poster boards, and it was all like the. You design. didn't even have the poster. Oh board yeah, yet. it wasn't. I'm sorry, she's right. Um, I just had the ideas. She's like, "What? What is this?" Just concept art. Concept. Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. But he's being modest. When he said I had some ideas, he had like 200 ideas. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> like that he had a it. folder full of like amazing ideas. These incredible, like inspiring. Sh- you know, the ego kills talent. Stay humble or be humble. I remember that one. All yeah. of this stuff, and it, it's like, and it was just sitting there in a folder on the computer, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. just living on the computer. And she's that's, like, "What do you do with this? How do you? Uh, that's <laughs> can I use one? <laughs> that's the hardest part about being a creator. Is like, how do you funnel? All these things you have is so broad. You got to find a way to funnel it into. Well, you know what's interesting is she helped me a lot with that in the sense of like you need to do something with this. I was like, yeah, yeah, but uh, I have more ideas. You come to me daily. <laughs> Two hundred like, ideas is not enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, at some point, you just got to do this. And I was yeah. Like, all right. So then I printed, I put up all mock-ups, print them out of the poster boards. I think it was like twenty something poster boards of just Whoa. different ones. I was like, I'm okay, okay uh, how do I get okay, this going? So then I said, hey, well. You know, a lot of times when people do art, if it's music or, you know, drawings or whatever it may be, you get sometimes too close to it. Yep. And you don't know 
what's good and what's bad anymore. Mm-hmm. And me personally, I don't take offense to anything. If somebody's like, I don't like it. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, what, what do you like about it? Tell me. Because then I might not listen to everything you say, but I might listen to like 2% of it. And it might give me spark another idea. Mm-hmm. Go somewhere else. It's perspective. So. You get that at least and, and outside people, perspective. And like a lot of people don't like to hear that. You know, mm-hmm. I love to hear it. I yeah. love it because it's like, oh, okay, wow, yeah. well, I don't agree with you. But yeah, let me hear what you, you have to say. So <clears throat> print it all out. I was like, all right, what can I do here? And so I decided to invite a bunch of different people from all walks of life, friends of mine, yeah. that listen to a certain type of music or live, you know, like to go out and partying in Hollywood or whatever it was. And I invited them over, and I laid them all out, numbered each one. And with everyone, oh, I like this one, I marked it. Sweet. And I marked it. So then I got a consensus, like a group right. study of what people liked. Like a focus group. Focus right. group, sorry. Yeah. Focus group. So what I found was very interesting was the p- certain people I knew were a certain kind of type. Kind of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Kind of hollywood mm-hmm. <laughs> They would always gravitate to a shirt. I'm like, this is kind of like. This is the kind of this person. Kind of making yeah. fun of them, and which they, like, oh, they didn't realize. That's funny. And every, every that's sing- hilarious. Every single time, it gravitated. Oh, oh I know, I know people, people like that. Like that. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's kind of you. This is you, you know? guy. Like, <laughs> you'd be surprised if people see it. Reflecting this right back on you. So then I, I, I did it, and I put it out, and uh, actually the first weekend I launched, we happened to be at a music festival in North Carolina, North Car- Carolina, Rebellion, Carolina yeah. Rebellion, which is a gigantic music festival. And um, I, was, I was like, well, I brought some shirts and, you know. Too bad you weren't there. You got one. <laughs> 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 All right, man. Thank you very much. So I had different friends of mine from different I bands. I got a shirt for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and they wore it that, 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 uh, that day, you know, on the stage, like the singer of Five Finger Death Punch, who's in oh, one yeah. of the biggest bands out. And uh, Ivan's like, yeah, man, you know, I'll wear it. And I don't ask, like, hey, man, can you take a picture of it? Like, yeah. it's just kind of like, hey, man, I kind of launched this thing. Kind of, yeah, it's the story. cool. Right. It's the story that resonates with people, I think. Yeah, and I, I've never asked anybody to take a picture with it, post about it, nothing. Right. It's, all, it's been 300% organic. So we're, like, literally watching the show, and I'm like, he did a costume change and changed into the shirt. Yeah. That's so cool. And it's like, That's when people believe in your product. Yes. And it's and, really yeah. cool, man. And that was like the first weekend. And I think the singer Disturbed wore it that weekend too. So oh. it's like, and it got, this thing got recorded for TV. So it was like played everywhere. <sighs> so it's just like, wow, that's crazy. And like a month later, was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we were... We were going to go see uh, Johnny Depp has a band with Alice Cooper and yeah, Joe yeah. Perry, uh, Hollywood Vampires. And um, uh, Alice's assistant was like, hey, uh, you know, you guys want to meet Johnny? I was kind of like, it was like, yeah, cool, but it wasn't like, can we meet Johnny? Yeah. And we're like, uh, well. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and we're like, uh, oh, okay. Like, uh, like, come over, take a picture. We're like, uh, okay. Like, yeah. And then she was wearing the Stay Humble or Be Humble shirt. And. Tell, tell what happened. Oh, Johnny actually took the shirt like this. He like grabbed it in his hand like that. He's like, this is an amazing shirt. Like, where did you get this oh, shirt? Sweet. Like, it was like that. Like, it wasn't even like, hey, check out the shirt. He was, he literally was like this. Like, if it was anybody else, it wouldn't like, okay. But <laughs> <laughs> he was like super mesmerized. He's by like, it. this is an amazing shirt. Like, where did you get this shirt? And we just so happened to have some in the car in the right size that we were going to give to somebody else. Like one of his friends, like the following week mm-hmm. happened wow. to pick him up from the printer on the way there. And he was like, you know what? Let's go get it from the car and go do it. And we put it in this dressing room and said, Hey, like just so you know, like I happen to have one and it's there and you know, no, no big deal, and but he, it's there. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll wear it after the show. Like, you know, when, you know after the show, I'll wear it. I'm just kind of like, you're not wearing a shirt. Like, yeah, I was just yeah, like, yeah. whatever. You know, yeah. it, was, it was cool. He was a nice, super nice guy. Really nice. And then we're like, oh, okay, whatever. And then we're sitting there watching the show, encore. You know, they get off stage for a second. And I'm like, neither. I was like, she's like, he's wearing the shirt. I, I turned like, into oh, a baby. I was like, the shirt, the shirt, the shirt. Like, what are you about? He's wearing the shirt. I was like, wait, what? And like, there he was wearing it. You probably put it in the most know? convenient spot. Like, oh, I just got out the bathroom. I need a, oh, yeah. I oh, did. Yeah, right? I did. I did. See, I put it on the couch. Strategy. Like, you know, you, like where you, where I put my after show clothes. That's important. <laughs> but like, that's an artist to be like, you know what? If I was an artist, I was going out there that's before. I would put my shirt right That's here. what I did. And what's funny is there's, there's pictures of him 
and there's a couch and he's wearing one of the shirts and there's like two other ones laying there and he's sitting on the couch. Like, I think I've seen this there. picture. Yeah. It's funny and people are like, oh, you have to Photoshop pictures of Johnny Depp and I'm like, no, that's actually I a really, real photo. <laughs> no, 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 I really that. was that tacky. I really did lay them on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like so cool about it. We talked, we hung out with him afterwards and he was just like, man, you know, I love it. You know, thank you so much for it because, you know, again, it goes, it's about how people get kind of, you know, in certain situations, people that they, they get used and that he went through a lot of stuff a couple years yeah. ago. And he's like, he's like, brother, he's like, this is the, this is my life. He's like, you know, I understand it. You know, he's like, I live this, you know, I'm like, oh, wow. You know, and that was a far and out he, dude. And he yeah. always wore it. Always. He did a Jimmy Kimmel appearance. He comes in with all the pop rice and stuff. He's wearing a stay mm-hmm. humble shirt. And I was we, we we saw him another time. And he's like, brother, he's like, you have any more of those shirts? I'm like, actually, I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, what didn't you know? <laughs> what didn't you know? Dude, and he just wears it on the side. He's like, he yeah. goes, I wear this all the time. Just when, to it, let you know, I was like, when, wow. when it's something that's on, like uh, the the print on a shirt is so important. Yes. Like especially like something like it just resonates with you. Mm-hmm. Like man, this shirt, this this the slogan, this motto is like speaking to me. Like oh, people yeah. are gonna like like that's their everyday shirt. Oh, in, yeah. in your in your world, uh, another cool experience was. Uh, this was like what three, four years, about four years ago. Um, I talked to Steve Austin, and uh, you we were. I was trying to, you know, obviously I manage Nita. Some people don't know, but I do. Um, and he hit me up. He was like, "Call me," you know, and we're you know, trying to get around the podcast. Yeah. So we, uh, he, we were talking about stuff. He's like, "Yeah, man, I want you guys to come to the house." And then I'm like, first of all, I was like, "Holy shit!" Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he's like, "Hey, bro." And he's like, "Hey, man, uh, what's up with that Beverly Kills?" Shit? You know, the the Austin story that I always hear is always just like, he's, it's never like a direct thing. It's like, hey, uh, you ever hear about that? Uh, hey, what's up with that uh, thing? It's like never a direct thing. Yeah, check it's me like, up yeah, about yeah. that thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, like we should, you know, kind of, yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's always weird how right. he asks things. And then he was like, he, I was like, well, yeah, that's a brand kind of tone. He's like, no, I, I, I get it. He's like, well, <laughs> it's about, he's like, no, I completely understand. I think it's awesome. I go, well, that's, that's actually my thing. He's like, really? I go, uh, well, yeah. I was like, man, I'll bring you some shirts. Here. He's like, hell yeah. I was like, all right, that's pretty badass, you know. And it's been cool as like, wow, ah. funny. Two days left, we'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> I hear this photo. Yeah, <laughs> Beverly kills yeah. You hey, know, you'd be surprised how many uh, messages I got about that. They're like, how did you get him to do that? I was like, I didn't. I didn't. Like, ask well, why do people think we have to manipulate someone to? How just much genuine. did you pay him for this ad? Like or sometimes you, uh, people just love. This what isn't you fire do. festival. Like no, like <laughs> people genuinely care about and stuff. Going to post the orange block. You know? <laughs> but like you know, he was so cool, man. He's such a genuine person, and uh, yeah, I was shocked. I was like you know, St- Steve's wearing your stuff. I was like, Steve, who? Like Steve Austin? Because <laughs> like, I just was getting like calls and texts. I was like, what are, you, what are you talking about? You know? And they're like, somebody sent me the link. I was like. Well, damn, that's awesome. You know well, I mean? goddamn. Oh, like, I'll be. God. It was so cool of him. Like, you know, it's just, and it's cool. Again, a guy of his stature that's been through a lot, he's seen all that. You yes. Know? He, Beverly Kills is the perfect example of what people, you know, again, one of the shirts is Eagle Kills Talent, how you can get up so fast, right? Mm-hmm. And it's your head gets blown up. And I know you see it in your industry. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden, you know, how, how, did, how that kills... What you what you're able to do and it kills like in your in your industry the push yes. and it kills all that stuff because their heads get too big and that, the other shirt we have yep. is stay this is the one Johnny wears is the stay humble be humbled it's kind of like you have all yeah, this yeah. Uh, yeah look at that guy huh oh uh, that's so saying. handsome ah, shooky yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, stay humble or be humbled like that's something like uh you know Mike Tyson talks yep. about you know how you can have the world in your hands but you know what your world can completely drop crumble it's, it's, it's great seeing him have this podcast too to actually be so open oh yeah and like he's very he he lets a lot out yeah you oh, know yeah. he's like i'm like you damn you really comfortable saying this <laughs> yeah. and you were admitting to this kind of stuff yeah. he's just vulnerable he lets himself be right. you yeah. know and like because he experienced it right and like I, I like i like listening to these guys have those introspective things to talk about because like i want to like why like what's the, what's the saying like um, smart mer- smart men learn from their mistakes. Wise men learn from the mistakes Other of others. Yeah. You want to hear from these guys and the mistakes they made and how they rose out of that and stuff. Yeah. Like, he offers that to us. It's yeah. great. It's, hearing him talk, it actually inspires a lot of stuff with me because it's like, yeah. man, he's the greatest of all time. 
you know, to me, he's my favorite fighter of all time. So, and the, and again, some people don't get it, but like, I was young enough to watch his fights mm -hmm. on TV. That aura that he presented, when you know he's coming down the ring and somebody's going to die and it's not him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, man, how is this guy going to even remotely survive, you know? But uh, yeah, with Beverly Kills, man, it's, I've been, I've had a lot of support from a lot of really cool people from the WWE to music people to yeah. all over, man. And it's just like, it's overwhelming. It's a movement, man. Yeah, it's really cool because it's a way of life, you know. And yeah. I think a lot of people see that, and I'm I'm super grateful. I'm super like it's. We go sometimes in different countries, and I'll see it. Some guy walking down the street or in the airport, and I'm just like, whoa, you know. She's like, look, it's your shirt. It's like almost like an out of body experience. It is. It's like that man. was on a poster board in our living room, and now it's on Johnny Depp. You like, know, now it's on a guy in the airport in Belgium or, you know, that's so wild. I saw a guy, I saw somebody at breakfast. I was, I was in Europe somewhere. I think that was in Belgium actually. It was, I went down to breakfast in the hotel and there was a guy wearing the logo shirt. This one that I'm wearing just at breakfast sitting there. I was like, and I walked past, I was like, maybe it's a fan. Maybe he's staying at the hotel. Like maybe this is somehow related. No, it's just a guy. I walked past. I was like, Hey, nice shirt. He looked at me like I was weird. He's like, thanks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it's not for me. <laughs> like, definitely. Trying to get my waffles, man. Like, <laughs> exactly. Leave me you. in peace. Let me eat my continental breakfast. Um, you just spoke about like um, the music industry, ego, and all this stuff. Like, dude, talking about, um, talking about that. I just watched the Six Nine documentary on Hulu. Oh, I've been wanting to see that. Yeah, I've been told to watch that. It's very interesting. I have a huge note right there. If you can look on this whiteboard, it mm. says music industry thoughts. Mm. When you watch this documentary and understand, like, once again, that was a straight shoot to the top because mm. nobody even knew or heard about this guy. SoundCloud, right? He came from SoundCloud? No, no. never had a record on SoundCloud. That's oh, the craziest wow. thing okay, about so it. I don't know much about his... Um... They, they go into that okay. and you'll, yep. you'll see. Mm -hmm. um, he just all... It was, it was the... His nickname was King of Cloud for the longest time. He just always knew how to branch off to the next person and leech off of them and get mm. everything. Oh, oh, you're popping. You're getting views. Mm, let's become friends and let me mm. hop in, hop in what, you, what you got going on. Let mm. me, oh, your crew, your click. I'm going to get with you guys. Mm. And then, like, people were just like, oh, who's that guy that's making all this noise and racking and saying all this uh, absurd stuff, wearing these clothes? I can't stop. You can't keep your eyes off of them. Mm. It had nothing to do with talent. The song wasn't even like to even he even he says it. He's like, oh, my music's not good, but I know how to make noise and I know how to get people to like to pay attention, pay attention and yeah. see me and stuff. And then the, like just watching how the like, numbers just shoot up. And that's what SoundCloud was. They didn't really they didn't really like navigate the sales. It was just how many people can click on social media and get attention. Yeah. And that's where it generated revenue and music and listens yeah. and stuff. So I really would like your guys' opinion and thoughts on how music, sales, attention, all that stuff is just generated through social media. Is now it's like bleeding into music. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about this? Yeah, yeah. Especially in your genre with metal and rock and everything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I feel like... It's an easy thing now to get caught up in what's going to get the likes, what's going to get the streams, what's going to get the attention. Um, and I think moving forward, the real challenge for artists is going to be how do you get the likes? Because no one's saying you can't make a living. You know, like right. would the goal is always to make a living, is always to be comfortable, is always to be happy. Um, but somehow finding a way to do all that without compromising your artistic integrity to say... Truth. I want the likes. I want the I want the validation. I want the you know the streams and the album sales and all that stuff. And you have to find a way, you know, for for all artists in all genres, you know, whether it's in wrestling, whether it's in music, whether it's in pop music or rock music, rock music or hip hop, to make that living and assimilate to like this sort of way of like you know the YouTube and the Instagram and the SoundCloud and everything else. Mm -hmm. And not get so caught up in it that you forget who you are as an artist and why you started doing it in the first place. With that being said, Lil Nas X. Right. <laughs> this is a line I'm really going to have to tether <laughs> with the, my audience here. Mm -hmm. Where do we go where it's like attention mm -hmm. and it's art? Mm -hmm. Sure. Do, you, do we 
do we as viewers believe it's art? And that's the way he's actually showcasing us his art and what he truly believes, just like your T-shirts and mm-hmm. your concepts and your 200 ideas and stuff. Right. Or is this just like, I know this is going to get outraged. Let me do something so shocking. So shocking. Yes. And market it to, and, and, and not only just market it to a certain audience, flip your audience from like making a song and going to elementary schools with kids and singing it, yeah. having it yeah. on Kids Bop and all yeah. these Kids Choice Awards to now going 100% 180 to here yeah. and has nothing to do with sexuality, no. in my opinion. I don't care what you are. I am Tyler Crater is right on my freaking wall. Mm-hmm. Love it. Don't care. Frank Ocean, love him. Yeah. Don't care. To me, it's just the to me it was the people that were consuming mm-hmm. his music and his art mm-hmm. to and parents that we don't like as, as me as a parent. Yeah. I don't know. I was gonna say you're coming at this as a parent as well. Yes, for me. I, do, I can't keep up with every new artist that's coming out that are kid friendly. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, it's hard. I don't even know what, like, um, there's, look, look, my kids don't even watch really TV. They sure. watch YouTubers and content yeah, and yeah. other people watching other people do stuff and right. watching other people <laughs> play other video games. That's what my kids watch in general. Right. And I'm like, okay, can we just watch something like artistic and like show, TV, movie, whatever? Right. But so it's hard to keep up with what they're consuming now. And the last thing I remember is Old Town Road as a parent. Mm-hmm. Now they're like, oh, I want to watch the new little little Nas X video. Oh, okay, yeah, let's put it on. And now it's this. It's like, mm-hmm. whoa. Right. Do you feel like as artists, they we have responsibility to that as well? Do we take yeah. responsibility for that? That's the word that I use a lot is responsibility. Yes. And and I get it. You know, Cardi B is not here to babysit your kids. You know, like, right? I, but I she get never it. projected but towards she never kids. Put it towards right. that. You know, right? right. That's, That's what I show. mean. Yeah, absolutely. And. You know, like myself as as a I can only speak to my experience and and I think anybody should be, you know, you can't tell anybody how to do their art. Mm -hmm. But, you know, myself, what I how I approach, you know, my social media, my interviews, all that kind of stuff. I always try to be somebody that a parent could show their kids. Be somebody that, mm-hmm. like, if a little girl wants to play guitar, I want their dad to be able to show her my videos and go, right. you know what? If you want to be a, a strong woman in rock, that's how you can be, you know, not overly sexual, not, you know, drunk and doing high mm-hmm. and cursing all the time or anything. I want to be somebody that can still rock, can still be fun, put on an amazing performance, wow a crowd, but somebody that a little girl can look up to and say, I want to be like her, you right. know, and have the parents be proud of that. Right. I think. My thing is, like, I'm not a parent, you know, mm-hmm. but I always try to put myself... Yet. Uh-oh. <laughs> no breaking news. <laughs> she's just saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just... Bre- no, <laughs> not yet. All right, I gotta go. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, so. oh, we gotta get nice. Hey, we gonna break this news. No, 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 not yet. Put Johnny Depp back up. <laughs> uh, I think Someday. it's a fine line, you know. I try to put myself in the shoes of if I were a parent, right? And I think about mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And I'm all about like what art. Do what you want. Do you know? And a lot of people go, you know, with this. Okay, so going to this, it's kind of like, you know, the thing I think I have an issue with it is. You know, the dude in January was saying how his core audience is children, right? Yeah. And then you're doing stuff like this. Mm-hmm. I just find that a little strange. And I find it a little like, what do you, like, you know what you're doing. At this mm-hmm. point, you know what you're doing. And you're kind of, you're, you're on the path, right? It's not like he woke up one day, like, I'm going to do this video now. You know, right. it's like, they, they know, like, they, it's very And the planned. blood and the shoes and, and all the, that. the whole shoe I'm afraid thing. to even watch the video. As a grown-ass man, I'm I afraid have, to even look at it. I have not seen yeah. it. Me, like, me neither. My sister loves playing it. And I'm like, oh, the tune is actually cool. But then the the lyrics get a little outrageous, too. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing, too. It's like, and I was talking to somebody about it, and they were like, uh, what about, like, these death metal bands, you know, Deicide and Morbid Angel? And I'm like, well, that, you know, I was like, yeah, that's true. I was like, well, wait a second. Think about those those kind of bands. They're very upfront. Like this is what we're about. Mm-hmm. This it's is what evil we talk in about. darkness. <laughs> yes, this is what it is. It, it says like f- they've always been a rated R movie. Yes. Exactly. They, it's yeah. not for kids. So, right. So, and you know, just look into the history of subliminal messaging. You know, it's been around forever and it works. Right. So mm-hmm. when you start like I'm this, no, I'm not. I'm actually this. Whatever uh-huh. it may be. All of a sudden. Like that's that's messing with people's like, minds. It was me all along. <laughs> <laughs> it was me, Austin. <laughs> Beverly Kills. 
So that's, I think, my my kind of thing where I see it's a little. If I was a parent, I'd be a little. It's tough to swallow. Weirdo, you know? it, it is. It's tough to swallow. You know, because like the artist in me, like I grew up listening to Eminem. Mm. Sure. Like he was talking about some outrageous stuff that you can't even say anymore. You can't. Yeah. No. Like sometimes those tracks don't even. You can't even. They, they're edited now, which yeah. is interesting. Now that you see him in interviews being like so outraged by things, it's like. Wait a second. Like, like, what are you talking about? You, like, you, you, don't, you don't get that line. Same thing with, you know. same Howard with Stern. Marilyn Manson. And like, Howard Stern. You know, Howard Stern. And now they're is, like, is he? Oh, my Lord, dude. What? Pot, like, pot kettle? Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't throw stones, brother. And it's like, dude, you built your whole, like, everything. That was the you shock know? era. Fighting censorship. Fighting people trying to put you down. You know, and my, that's my whole thing with, like, the, the idea of, of, of cancel culture. Honestly. If you don't like something, don't watch it. But you yeah. don't have to destroy somebody's life you know like mm. if you think about Howard Stern you know when he was coming up in the uh, radio airwaves right. they were trying to destroy his life you know yeah. they were trying to completely get him off there and he fought tooth and nail to be where he was what gets me is that they go try to go back 15 years that's, that's what gets me yeah. yeah like go back 15 years and go like oh this stand up that you said like we were talking about with Brad Williams about that like how hard is it to do true stand up comedy in the era that we're in yeah. and really like push the envelope with it it's like, how do you do comedy in general now? Like, that was the whole dude. reason people went to stuff was to get a good laugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? like, like, I want to hear a good black joke. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I don't care who it's coming from. Right. If it's good, like, you know what I mean? It's, if it's funny, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, all the, the stuff in today, man, it's, 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 a, it's a fine line. And I'm all about letting people do whatever they hell they want. As long as yeah. they don't hurt anybody and all that kind of stuff, I'm cool with it. But got to be a little bit more. I think people need to be upfront about who they are and what they are. Yeah. You know, because one time, uh, not even too long ago, uh, Billie Eilish's video was on. And right, right. It was the, 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 the sound was off. And so I was like, and I saw the lyrics coming up of uh, all good girls go to hell. And I was like, what the hell is this? You know, she has like the, the devil wings and the yeah. fire and uh, oh, sweet Lucifer. Da, da, da. I'm just like, what is this? And then, <laughs> then it came up and said, Billie Eilish. I was like, Whoa! I was like this, and she's like a role model to kids, and the whole Cardi B thing with the was it WAP or WAP, whatever it is. Yep, doing it like it's it's at, a little at much. the Grammys and stuff. I'm like, oh, this is like a nationally national, but which blows my mind because um, Janet Jackson got freaking canceled for the yeah, on the bro. same channel years yeah. ago yeah. for this, but we can really just sing about WAP. I'm like, yeah, Whoa. Millie Vanilli got their life destroyed. One of the guys killed himself. And now everybody lip syncs. Yeah, like everybody know, writes. Everybody. They, everybody has writers. And they took the, they took their Grammy away. They took their Grammy away for for not singing live. And now every televised performance is to tape, except you know, mine. It's interesting how that. <laughs> Damn, right. It's so, let me let me tape it. Like <laughs> you just want to see me really perform? <laughs> turn my <turn laughs> sound off. I'm saying <laughs> it's it, and again so like so many things that, like that have changed and the, just like the. Like again, Millie Vanilli, like you know, their lives were destroyed. You know, uh, their lives were destroyed because they were, you know, seen as lip syncers and mm-hmm. you know, but and look now, everybody does it. You know, it's like it's interesting. I was listening to an interview, um, he they were talking about like what are some tropes that you couldn't get away with back in the day that now, like, the industry is kind of like it's free form, like. Oh, like oh yeah, that's the thing. When people do that, but like back in the day, like two thousand, early two thousand, you would get slaughtered for doing these type of oh, things yeah. in music. Yeah, mm-hmm. like um, uh, they were talking about like writing, mm-hmm. like if you like a co write, yeah, in in or in, 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 in as a yeah, as a an MC as a true lyrical MC and stuff, mm-hmm. you can't have anybody write your stuff. Sure, right. like a Kendrick Lamar, if his if some if, if two lines were not written for a Kendrick Lamar, that would just crush everybody. Mm. But now it's like, oh, but Drake can have like a full song done from yeah. somebody in his sweatshop, and then it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, like oh man, as long as that thing bops though, he like because yeah. Drake is an artist. Yeah, I He's performed at uh, the ASCAP Pop Awards a couple yeah. years ago with Alice. Um, they were honoring this amazing songwriter Desmond Child, who mm. has written some, you know, the most incredible hits for so many different artists. And they gave an award to the writers of the song Despacito. And there was about 
15 people on that stage. I've noticed these there too. There was, you know, like, and it's, and it's the, I think the most streamed song of all time and, and all power to the writers. And I think it's amazing that such a, a great piece of art was co-created by so many people. But That's like, cool. there was like 15 people accepting the award for songwriting of that song. And it's like, who, who actually did what? Mm. I'd like to know. <laughs> we don't see credits anymore. On the back of albums, we don't see it. There's no. not even hardly any albums. Albums, what's that? <laughs> what's an album. And yeah. to me, growing up, that was the, the one of the most fun things when you bought yeah. a CD or record. You look, look at it. And I wanted to see where it was recorded, who engineered mm-hmm. it, who was the producer, mixed it, who all that. I studied all that stuff. Orchestrated in the rock, in the yeah, rock world. Mastering. I was like, where, oh wow, this was recorded in three different studios. That's amazing, you know. Right. And you would see all that and put things together. Who did the artwork? Who did this? Who did that? People don't even know that anymore. They don't know. And they, like, dude, when I seen um, Songwriter of the Year, it was like, it wasn't even Grammys or anything like that. It was like some, like, um, Musicians Guild Award mm-hmm. thing. And like, so Cardi B won a Songwriter of the Year. I'm like, but, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, what are we doing? What are we Just doing right now? What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? Do we have a, do we come up with a chit track question? By the way, graphic wise on the post edit, this is Chit Trap, y'all. What would be a band that, or what would be like a super group that you would form that wouldn't make sense to anyone else, but it would make sense to you? Hmm. Like personal taste. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Oh boy. I like groups mo- mainly when there's three people. To mm. me, that's my favorite, like, core group. Yeah. Mm. Like, three at the most. Yeah. yeah. Not too many different personalities. Yeah. Because, like, a Wu-Tang is, there should only be, like, a one Wu-Tang. Right. Yeah, like, it shouldn't be, like, yeah, like, five Wu- different Wu-Tang type, 18 <laughs> groups, people, no. So, are you saying to put people together that purposely don't make sense? Is that the idea? Or like, who's your super group that you would just put together for your own? Like, this is like my yeah. dream. Yeah, just like your own personal what it is. It it doesn't really even have to make sense, right? To like like put like I don't know. Just for example, uh, there's a LA hip hop artist I use. I I love named The Alchemist. Like I would randomly yeah. like to hear him and Tangerine Dream. They've worked together before, but I would like just to hear them just do weird stuff, instrumental huh. stuff. Nice. Weird. I would like to hear a uh, Travis Scott and. Gambino combination. I always wanted to hear. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, uh, maybe maybe throw in like a Uzi, Lil Uzi in there, because it's the, they, that's all like three different unique sounds, but they all have the same wild spacey. Mm. I always wanted to hear Corn and uh, Mystical. Totally. Yo, <laughs> yo, always, because I love Mystical's voice. Oh. I always like. I might have to change my answer because <laughs> yeah. that's lit. Yeah, that's cool. and I always wanted to hear uh, <sighs> when I used to go like to clubs in LA and stuff like that. Um, I would go out and every, and I'm not a huge, I'm not into EDM at all, really. And every time I would be in the club, I'd like, I'd stop and be like, "Hey, who is this?" And they're like, "Skrillex." I'm like, Skrillex. Is, oh, okay. Yeah. And then. Months later, hey, who is this? Skrillex. I'm like, wait a second. Because <laughs> and he's a metalhead. Be- because I would hear oh, the vibes in his music. Right. I'm like, this is a metal song, you know? Yeah. I'm like, wait a second. And I'll start looking into Skrillex. He's a metalhead. He yep. was in a metal band. And I'm like, he writes his songs like that, like you would write a metal song, like these breakdowns and these peaks and valleys. And Dude, I'm like, he did stuff with ASAP. Mm-hmm. And he, wow. like you'll see a lot of mixes with him and hip hop artists. I love mm-hmm. the the Rick Ross thing he did. Yeah, that, that oh, song. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. That's he has some cool stuff. He's a big metalhead. So I would. He actually did some stuff with Corn. He did. Corn did a record with different uh, EDM people. I love Corn. Huge. Yeah. Huge Corn. I mean, fan. they're so such big innovators. Yeah. You know? Huge. Yeah. Like, and this is like outside my genre, but like I still like Corn was like, I love these guys. It was them and Pantera mm-hmm. stood out to me. Immediately. Yeah. What's funny is like I was gonna say a group that I'd love to see is like you know Skrillex and like a Phil Anselmo uh, from Pantera, yeah, yep, Pantera yep, yep, and Phil. a couple other people putting it together where yeah. it doesn't make sense, but like you know again Skrillex is a metalhead and I love how he puts stuff together. You know, shout I out, think it's awesome. Like we shout out DMX. DMX would go with a lot of good oh, metal yeah. bands. Totally. Oh it's man. So aggressive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like even in like a um uh 
Onyx with mm, like a metal band or something. Slam. They did that. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they did. did a rendition of Slam with Biohazard. That's right. Biohazard. I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, man, this is good. This yeah. is fun times. And then uh, that was like, uh, that was always cool, the collaboration with metal bands and hip hop, right? So, it's like, always fun. They had, uh, who was it, Anthrax? It did, uh, Run DMC? No, oh, that was uh, well, Aerosmith. Aerosmith and Run DMC. And the Anthrax. Anthrax. Uh, Public, Public Enemy. Enemy. Yes. Bring the Noise. Yeah. 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 Kill them to bring the noise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. R- Rage. That's so good. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine, mixing with anybody was mm-hmm. always great. Yeah. So it was cool, you know, and I love those mashups and... You don't, I don't, you don't see them as much anymore. I wish uh, there was like that, but like, you know, but like that, they, they did a record, uh, Korn did a record, I forget what it was, with, with the different EDM ones. There's a song called uh, Get Get the F*** Up or something like that, and it's Skrillex and Korn. It's awesome. It's really cool. Did really you cool. with uh, Ja Rule? Oh no, Metallica! Yeah, 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 yeah we did it again. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that never came out. You know that it never. I don't think it ever officially came. It never, out. Oh, really? Did it come out or did it take that not take off? I remember. I don't it think it ever song. came out. Oh. Do you remember the movie The Biker Boys? No. Yes. Biker Boys. It was on that. Yes. Movie, that oh, was it? it? Yeah. They had this uh, really cool song, but uh, most of it happened. Uh, that song actually kicks off the movie and it's like very sweet very somber and then like you know a couple tracks later you get Ja Rule and uh, Metallica, Metallica. <laughs> yeah they, I don't think the the band wanted that one. They, I don't think they were too happy with the way it came out but then you know Ja Rule became Mr. Firefest so yo these sales are coming from six different credit cards yo <laughs> <laughs> yo yo no for real like no we got. I gotta say this again look at it right here yep. I'm like yeah we know yeah, yeah, but it's funny. But <laughs> we like you know probably because you know you do a lot of research. But how many people don't know? That's you know the scary part. That's the thing is like a lot yeah. of people don't know how, you know how that stuff comes into in the airplay stuff. People act like that stuff doesn't exist. The, the pay to play and all that, you know. And he talks about it very openly. You know. Yeah. He's like, I can have a number one record if I want to. I just don't want to pay for it. You know. It's like, yeah, wow. like ooh. yeah, it's like oof. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised. Like. The, p- the amount of people that he pissed off in the industry and outside the industry oh, is yeah. like, how? How is he still around? How? And yeah. he got paid even more coming out of prison. Yeah. Got 20 million deal that was crazy. coming wow. out of prison. That was crazy. Wow. And his music never really, it, I don't think his music has the traction that it does anymore, but like, like he, he already got the money. It's like, well, what, what else is he going to do? Yeah, you know, he can't. I, I definitely wouldn't suggest him going to like uh, UFC or anything because I saw that LAX video of him fighting outside. Oh, LAX. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go well. Oof. No. <laughs> this man was never, he never promoted that he was a good fighter. No. <laughs> well, it was like the Charlemagne the God thing, too, when they were trying to jump him outside of the radio station. Did you ever see that? Yes. Like, hey, homie, can I get a drop? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Punched them. That's another trope. Like, man, if you got punched on video camera, your career was done. Yeah. Now people, yeah, back in the day, like, no, no I ain't listening to your music. You ain't gangster. Yeah, I just saw right? you get dropped at freaking the bus stop. <laughs> Why are you taking the bus? Who is that that happened to? But you got dropped charging up your Tesla. What are you talking about? <laughs> Suge Knight. Suge. A video of him uh, oh, yeah, years back. Like Did yeah, he? So he yeah, dropped him hard. And then, like, it was funny. Well, it wasn't funny. It was crazy because, like, everyone's like, oh, God, this is good. Like, hey, I'm security guard. Like, hey, I'm security guard. Go puff up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, that security hey. guard is living a fine life right and now. the security guard was just like, man, we got to a scrap. And he's like, I knocked him out. He's like, I'm not bragging. I'm not. He's like, it just something happened. Like, he's uh, he's trying to live a life. The security guard's like, please don't make this yeah, a big deal or nothing. Yeah, you just knocked out Shredder from Ninja Turtles, man. <laughs> like, no, you don't think no. <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> Super Shredder. You knocked him out. And he's a big dude, man. I used to Huge. see him out in L.A. a lot. Like, he'd just sit there out on the patio of the certain bars and just sit there smoking a cigar, you know? I'm just like, He is such wow, a figure. I would, I would like <laughs> I'd be like, hey, I saw him. I would make sure he didn't see me, though. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to get you guys out of here, man. Right. Like, y'all got mania to be at. Y'all got a <laughs> crazy long week. You did stand and deliver. What else do y'all got coming up? Do we have any tour dates possibly, possibly in the future? Are we looking? One looking? can only hope. Yeah. I think I'll start touring about the same time you guys start touring. So uh, yeah, yeah, let's, most likely. Let's hope. You know, um, I'm working on a new record. Uh, anybody wants to check that out? Um, I've got all the updates on my Patreon page, uh, patreoncom Nita. 
that's where you guys can find everything that I'm up to. Yeah, and uh, BeverlyKills.com, and I'm also working on my band. i seen this. My, mm-hmm. my music project as well, so that's very, very... It's been like... Uh, Guns N' Roses had a record called Chinese Democracy, yeah. which took them like 15 years to put out, and had to be recorded <laughs> a bunch of times. This is like my Chinese Democracy. It's taken me a long time, but it's going to be worth it, and I'm very excited. And Yeah, so BeverlyKills.com, and I'll announce my music project when it comes, and yeah, that's that. Absolutely. Once again, one more time, the graphic up. Swerve City, GPS, and TZ Scott, Erica Sun, Monty, you get it in all streaming platforms. All of them. I'm telling you. And it's on title. We work with Jay-Z. He don't know me, though. But it's on there. <laughs> he will. It's dope. One day. We'll see. <laughs> and as always, be confident in everything you do. You got to say it now, Mike. Wash your ass. And do your homework. <laughs>